Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to the channel Your Stars Align. This is your host Carmina, astrologer with Vedic Principles and reader with the Cards of Truth. And today we're going to be doing a video that's really close to my heart because um, we're going to be looking at the charts of drag queens. I've been watching RuPaul's Drag Race since 2012. I've been a very big fan of it. Um, I love uh, the the competition factor, and I love because I love um, drag queens as entertainers because they are funny, because they are great at doing makeup. They have great makeup skills. They have great sewing skills. Um, and most of all, I love uh, the performance, the dancing, the runway, the attitude and the transformation because I have a very strong Scorpio element in my chart. I am a fan of the transformation. So um, I wanted to do this video for a very long time about drag queens, but the thing is not very many of them have their birth data public. So you have like the date, the year, the month, but you don't have the time. So I was thinking, what am I going to analyze with it? But I'm going to show you in this video that even without the birth time, you can tell a lot about a person just by looking at their chart without knowing their ascendant. And uh, so even if you're not interested or fascinated with drag queens as I am, you can still learn a lot from this video on how to uh, use the signs and some conjunctions to tell important things about a person. Okay, so let's get started. But before that, don't forget to check out my website, yourstarsaligned.com under services and see what the consultations I offer with the cards of truth and with astrology. Let's see now. Let me share my screen. Okay, so I decided that today we would look at the season 10 queens. And I'm going to do a video in the future uh, looking at all the queens, like a research on all the, the drag queens I have the data of. Uh, so if you know any drag queens and you know their birth time or at least their ascendant sign, just email me at carmina at yourstarsaligned.com because I'm very interested to know. Okay, so season 10 queens. We're going to start in alphabetical order because that's more impersonal so that you guys don't accuse me of favoritism. This is a South Indian layout and I'm going to switch the chart screen options to a round wheel. Okay. So this is Aquarius chart. Aquarius was born on the 12th of February 1996. And um, what can we see when we look at her chart without knowing her birth time? We see Venus and the South Node in Aries and the North Node in Libra. So uh, during past lives, she invested a lot of her time in um, beauty, in art, in diplomacy, because all these are Venusian things. And she's been investing these uh, in these qualities in doing it on her own, because Aries is a fire sign, it's a sign of pursuing your inspiration, of being self-reliant. It's a quadruped sign, so it's a sign that can bear great burdens. So it was a person that was taking a lot of responsibilities, a lot on their shoulders regarding Venusian things. So also beauty, art, entertainment, but not limited to that, also diplomacy. And, um, so yeah, this is what they're comfortable with. This is what Aquaria likes to do. And you will see that people who have Venus with K2, AKA the South Node, they are very graceful, like innately, like the way they walk, the way they carry themselves is very graceful, very elegant. Um, 
So yeah, that's her comfort zone. Being self-reliant, pursuing her inspiration and uh, doing her Venusian things. Let's look at the Lord of Venus and the South Node because it's in Aries, it's Mars. Mars is in Aquarius with the Sun. Aquarius is a neutral dignity for Mars, so it's okay. Uh, Aquarius is a sign that is a humanitarian. It's a sign that brings something of value to the world. So yeah, so in her past life when she was exploring her Venusian side, Aquaria was bringing uh, something of concrete value to the world. Actually, it's not something concrete because it's Aquarius, it's more like social and personal. Yeah, so with her Venusian qualities, she was bringing something artful, something concrete to groups of people. And right now, so this is her comfort zone. This is what she um, she is good at, but she has to evolve past this. She has to step out of her comfort zone and work in a partnership in Libra. Yeah, and it's interesting because the Lord of the North Node is with the South Node. So the key is somewhere here. The key of solving this partnership thing is also going back to to solving and perfecting your uniqueness, your fire of individuality, your Dharma path, which is Venus with Ketu in Aries. So yeah, she needs to learn to work more in partnership. She needs to learn about the fairness in human interactions, which is all Libra. Um, yeah, because the North Node is something that we're not really experienced with. She will do some mistakes, of course, like all of us. So she will either go too hard in a partnership or say that she's not interested in being in a partnership at all, which is, of course, not true. But what she would need to do in order to feel fulfilled with her soul's mission in this life is to to take her fire of inspiration and her uniqueness and somehow integrate it in a partnership without losing her individuality. This is her challenge in this life. So what else can we see from her chart? Mm, the soul planet can be Mars or the moon because we see the moon is here at 22 degrees and the soul planet is a planet with the highest number of degrees but because the moon moves so fast if she's born like five hours later actually five degrees like 10 hours later uh, her soul planet can be the moon so it's either moon or mars with sun and mars here together it's a pretty hot combination it's a person that you know kind of snaps really easily and i guess Aquaria doesn't like hot weather very much with these two hot planets close together. The sun also being a symbol for the body. Um, what else do we have here? Jupiter and Mercury. Yes, Jupiter is debilitated unfortunately for her. So many times in her life she, she tends not to see the bigger picture because Jupiter is debilitated and stopped by Mercury. So she sees the details, but not the, the bigger picture. And also it's difficult for her to, um, to give, it's a challenge for her that she, she has to overcome. Like when she gives something, she doesn't have to follow the, the outcome of her giving someone something. So if you give a poor person some money, you don't have to stick around to see if they buy alcohol or food or whatever, you just have to give it and just let it go. So yeah, she needs to work on that. She needs to work on uh, not being um, concerned with the consequences of her generosity because Jupiter is all about generosity. And Capricorn is the part in us that thinks we are the doer, that thinks we are in control of things. 
So that's why Jupiter is debilitated here because you can't really be looking at the effects and the consequences of your generosity. Um, okay, let's see what else can we say without knowing her birth date. Hmm. Saturn is influencing her son, but it's not to a great extent. Let's see. I mean, it is a pretty great extent, but the sun gets delighted by Moon, Mars, and Jupiter. So some, sometimes in her life, she feels that by, by punishing her inspiration, by pursuing her inspiration, she feels punished. And so she is reluctant about pursuing and following her inspiration. But then luckily for her, um, the sun is delighted by the moon. So when she pursues her inspiration, she feels like she is being nourished and fulfilling her needs. And then Mars is also delighting the sun. So by pursuing her creativity and fire of inspiration, she feels really energized. So yeah. What I would recommend is maybe spend more time with children because Jupiter is the manifester of children and children are innocent, so playing children that will help her, the Jupiter within her, um, you know, uh, develop. And I would say she didn't have much luck with men. I mean, she will meet a lot of unworthy men in her path because Jupiter is the natural significator for the man uh, for the spouse and because Aquaria is uh, attracted to men you know men a lot of men in her path will be really not worthy and uh, confused okay I think we can move on to the next chart and that's the next contestant, Asia O'Hara. Asia is born on the 7th of July, um, 82. And I wanted to say this quick fact because I see she's a cancer. Uh, like a spoiler for my drag queen research is that I noticed, and the people on Reddit noticed as well, that most of the, the drag queens in this competition have a cancer sun sign. And uh, the least present sun sign is Scorpio. And that's very interesting because RuPaul, one of the producers of the show and the main host, is a Scorpio sun sign. And sun is one of the cell factors for every person. So I guess, you know, um, and another thing about Scorpios, you know, Scorpio and Cancer are two signs that are magnetically attracted to one another. Uh, Scorpio is the fifth from Cancer. So the fifth from a sign is creativity and, you know, pursuing one's path and also children. So I think somehow, because the sun is also like your life vision, I think in RuPaul's life vision, he integrates more cancer type people because there are 19 contestants that were a cancer son as opposed to like three Scorpio sons. So I, I think he, he relates to, to cancer sons more as like his children. Also a fun fact is out of the, the 11 winners of Drag Race seasons and All Stars, most of them are cancers as well, like three cancers. Bianca Del Rio, Sasha Velour, and Bob the Drag Queen. So all new, well, Bianca is not a New Yorker, but she's living in New York at the moment, I guess, but they're all cancerians. So I think that's very interesting how this dynamic, but I digress. I'm gonna look at Rue's chart in relation to other queen's chart, maybe do some compatibility with some queens that he really got along with and some queens that he didn't get along with. And that's gonna be fun and interesting. So Asia O'Hara, we already mentioned, the sun is Cancer. We see the North Node here with the sun. Um, okay, so the sun with the North Node is a combination that 
makes a person magnetically attractive to other people. It brings them to the spotlight. And Asia O'Hara is one of the person that has something, you know, um, Asia O'Hara is like 30 something, but looks in her 20s. And it really has some, some appeal, some magnetic appeal, some charm. And um, what Asia needs to develop is cancer. Because although she has this magnetic appeal, this sign is under development. Any sign the North Node is in is a sign under development. So she comes from a past life background where um, she was in a position of authority because the South Node is in Capricorn, which is a very, you know, a self controlled authoritarian sign. So that's her safe zone that's her safety place and now she has to go to expressing her feelings like expressing her genuine first feeling not the second not the third feeling and being more emotionally open more flowing more adaptable not rigid like capricorn so let's see the dignities uh, okay capricorn is ruled by saturn which is exalted so yeah, she was very good at what she was doing in her past existence in the position of authority. Um, right now, she's a, I could say she's a workaholic because when you see Saturn and Mars together, you know, these people work beyond the point of exhaustion. So yeah, Saturn is in great shape. So she's good at perseverance and patience. Like she gets a lot of things done by just trying and trying and trying and persevering. And what else? Let's see, the North Node is in Cancer, so the Lord is the Moon in Aquarius. Hmm. So yeah, she has to express her feelings in the context of groups, which is Aquarius, and in a social context, because the Lord of the, the North Node is in Aquarius. Yes. And also she has to develop her leadership skills because the sun is a Kshatriya planet, very orderly, very disciplined. She has Mercury with Venus in Gemini. That's a great combination for being charming and having a sweet speech and people listening to what you're saying and giving you things easier than if you had other combinations. So that's a very auspicious combination to have. She has Jupiter in Scorpio. So her Jupiter is the same sign as RuPaul's sun. So that's good. I think, she, um, yeah, RuPaul feels that uh, Asia O'Hara brings him joy because Jupiter is joy. <laughs> Yes, that in a nutshell is Asia O'Hara. Yes, I'm going to stop now because I have a reading scheduled. So don't be scared if my lighting is different and if my outfit is different when I do the rest of the queens. It's an ongoing project. Talk to you soon.